Okay, Pops, I know a lot of people that watch our videos have a lot of consternation, big SAT word there, with auto car dealerships, excuse me, car dealerships. What's really starting to grind my gears in the new environment that we're in is that that consternation, I think, should be focused a little bit more on the actual automakers. I'm not sitting here saying, hey, car dealers are the best thing since sliced bread. Like, you raised me because you were a sales manager at a dealership. I, I'm very neutral. I just want the process to be more efficient. I think what automakers are doing recently, Pops, is super anti-consumer, and I kind of wanted to you know, uh, peel back this uh, uh, curtain and talk about it a bit with you. Well, I mean, if you're referring to the fact that many of the uh, CEOs of these large uh, manufacturers have stated that they kind of like the concept of lower inventory levels and higher profit margins, both for them and their dealers, then yes, I agree with you, because many of them... Um, Jim Farley from Ford, you know. Yeah, do you want to, here, let me, let me read the quotes to you. Let's just, let's level set here. Okay. In May, GM CEO Mary Barra told reporters that America's largest, largest automaker would, quote, never go back to pre-pandemic inventory levels. In September, BMW's chief financial officer said the company would also keep inventory low to, quote, keep our pricing power at the current level. Uh, Ford has moved more to a build-to-order model where dealers keep fewer cars in stock. And my favorite quote, Pops, comes from Mercedes-Benz's CFO, who said, quote, we will consciously undersupply demand level. Yeah, yeah. You know, not like, not like um, you know, Mercedes-Benz wasn't expensive enough to begin with, but they're going to consciously keep supply levels low so that those who buy Mercedes-Benzes are going to have to pay even more. Um, and I get it. I mean, you know, if if you're a public company and you have stockholders to appease, I get it. Um, if you're the consumer, oh, you're about to get it, uh, okay, and not in a way that you'd want to get it. Uh, and that's that's the problem with so much of what goes on. It's just everything is is driven by profit, profit margin. How much can we get from the consumer? How much will the consumer put up with? Um, and th these automakers are now determined to see to it that consumers are going to pay more. Uh, they're going to only produce their highest profit margin vehicles. Um, they're considering raising their MSRPs closer to what today's transaction prices are um, so that th as the manufacturer, they can realize a greater profit. Um, and the dealerships, as long as there's this artificially short supply moving forward, um, will be able to continue to sell cars at MSRP and above so that the dealerships will be able to make more profits than they ever had. And the customers are the ones that are going to pay for it all. And we've seen new car prices are up I think it's like 25% year over year. Used car prices are up over 30% year over year. One of the other things that we reported on recently, destination fees, destination charges, which yes. are just these black boxed fees that show up on your Monroney label on the window sticker. Those have gone up higher than the rate of inflation over the past few years. Oh, yeah, they've gone up like 25, 30% in a lot of For cases. For some of the brands, yeah. Yes. And so there are all these different money grabs from the automakers that are really not empowering their customers customers at all. And if you think about it, we talk a lot on this channel, Dad, about playing the long game and building relationships with people. These feel, these things feel like so antiquated and it's just like not supporting the consumer. These are ways of acting in the past where you don't empower your customers. We're in the present, like empower us, be honest with us, be open with us. I really don't want to see Honestly, Uber-like pricing, where it's demand, supply-demand-based pricing for my next Ford Explorer. Like, that's BS. It's like buying a shirt. If the shirt's in more demand at Kohl's, I shouldn't have to pay more. Just let me pay in my damn Kohl's cash. Like, I don't want to show up to Kohl's because you only got one left. Now I have to pay more. Like, to me, that feels so... Like, I get it from the capitalism standpoint. But that doesn't feel empowering to me as a consumer. It doesn't make me want to have that relationship with that brand. And we're literally seeing... One of our great community members reached out to me, sent me a text ad, said he was talking to one of the executives over at Ford, who was alluding to them saying in their, in their board meetings, oh, we have a lot more price power than we thought we had. We can raise prices and people will still buy it. 
That's not good. That's really not good. Well, listen, the 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 end user is paying for all of this, and the end user is the consumer. And as long as consumers are willing to accept this, then it will continue. The there is strength and power in numbers. It's also a classic game theory prisoner's dilemma situation, right? Like you don't know what some what the other prisoner is going to do. So if you need to buy a car, you buy the car. And it perpetuates this cycle. It's it's tragic. Well, but most of, most cars that are bought in America today are not bought because of need. They're purchased because of want. I hear you. I, 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 hear I had a golf store. Okay, I had. I mean, when the big Bertha Woods came out, and everybody came in and they go, "Do I need them?" I don't know if you need them, but let me ask you a question. Do you want them? Oh, yeah, I want them. Then you need them, okay? You know, most businesses are not in the need business. They're in the want business. The problem is um, there's a difference between a $300 uh, big berth of wood and, I don't know, a $60,000 Ford Explorer. Um, if, if, if your pre-owned three- or four-year-old vehicle... Um, can continue to be used, then you don't need, you just want that $60,000 Explorer. Fight off your wants. Uh, it, and it's hard because, you know, we're bombarded with advertising on a daily basis. Hell, you're bombarded with advertising when you watch these videos. And so many of these the ads are for automobiles. And you know, it just psychologically creates this this desire that we have to have the latest and the greatest, the newest, the best. I how did I, how did I get by without a heated steering wheel? I don't know. You know how you did. You somehow you worked it out. You know how how, how could I have a car without a backup camera? I don't know. They didn't have them for the first 110 years. How did you do it? You you turned around and you looked. I mean, how hard was it? Um, so it's like, do you really need it do you, or do you just want it? And if you can fight your wants, then maybe... Um, we we can we can start addressing what manufacturers and dealers are doing because uh, not as many people will be willing to pay what they want us to pay. No, I'm done. Yeah, I... Stop stop buying cars. dot com. Check. Oh it out. yeah, that that's a good place to go because you'll see me like this. Yeah, stop buying cars. It's it's just you know it's pretty simple. <laughs>